Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me today. I want to start by apologizing for the radio silence over the past uh, three weeks or so. Things have gotten really busy uh, in my life, and, um, and also I've been really busy transitioning the way that I play Magic. Uh, this screen here is very different from what you've all grown accustomed to at my channel, uh, and that's right, I have made the transition to Magic the Gathering Online. And yeah, I'd like to take a few minutes in this video to discuss that transition. Uh, for me, it's, it's sort of a bittersweet process because Cockatrice um, is really a wonderful piece of software. The concept of Cockatrice is especially great. Uh, it allows you to play Magic online uh, against your, uh, your friends, against talented opponents around the world uh, for free. And for many people, uh, that is a really, really important part of the equation, uh, the for free part. Uh, most people spend hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars buying paper cards. And when it comes time uh, to practice online, um, they feel that they shouldn't be forced to spend similar amounts of money for the same cards only in a digital version. And that to me is a totally reasonable position. And it was the position that I took uh, for the years, the past couple of years that I've been spending playing Cockatrice. Uh, and uh, I, I have to say the majority of the time that I spent playing on Cockatrice, uh, I got an excellent gameplay experience. And I say that with no exaggeration. The majority of the time I got the experience that I was looking for. I learned my deck better, I learned the format better, and just generally got a lot of value out of this free software. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you know, there is, a, there is, a, is another side of the coin. The majority that I speak about here, um, that I had a, a positive experience, uh, is really only a slim majority of the time that I spent playing on Cockatrice. The other 48, 49% of the time, really almost half of the time, uh, I had a suboptimal gameplay experience, and really for two reasons. I always made a, a room called Modern Competitive, and uh, a lot of the times, people would bring their wacky homebrews uh, into the room. And I have nothing against brewing. It's, uh, it's a really excellent thing to do. It's really creative. Um, pretty much every competitive deck starts as some brilliant idea that somebody brews up in the middle of the night, and eventually the, the deck uh, starts winning tournaments, becomes more and more popular. But when somebody creates um, a game room called Modern Competitive, uh, that person who created the room has an expectation uh, that they're going to be playing against established decks in the format. Uh, I, I play Merfolk, um, and it, I'm doing my best to become the best Merfolk pilot that I can possibly be. And the only way I can do that is if I'm playing against uh, other popular decks in the modern format. Uh, I need to test against our good matchups, bad matchups, I need to know which cards are pulling their weight, which cards are not which sideboard strategies work, which ones are suboptimal, and if you bring your random homebrew, um, I'm not doing any of that testing. Uh, sure, I might learn some interesting interactions that I didn't know about in the modern format, uh, and that's, that's valuable information, of course. It's, it's really good to know about um, the card pool of modern in, in, a, in a deeper way, but that's not really what I'm looking for when I make a modern competitive game room. Uh, so that's sort of the first category of experiences in Cockatrice that pop up all the time and that ultimately waste time. The other category is just people coming into the game with a bad attitude and often quitting before the match uh, is complete, ultimately also wasting time in a different way, more directly wasting time. Um, and that, it's sort of a catch-22 of playing um, a collectible card game for free. Uh, on the one hand, you get this sort of utopian situation where if everybody puts together a, a free deck with these digital images uh, and plays to the best of their ability all the time, then, then wonderful. Uh, you're getting exactly what you hope for. Uh, on the other side, though, there's this inevitable, um, inevitable downside that um, without a financial commitment, in the, without any stakes in the game, uh, there's no there's no drawback to just quitting in the middle of a match, and so you get a lot of immature people who don't really understand fully 
what we should be trying to get out of our gameplay time. Uh, it, when things don't go their way, instead of learning and potentially changing cards in their deck, they just simply quit. Not only wasting my time, but wasting their time as well. And so those, when you start spending dozens or hundreds or thousands of hours uh, playing on a piece of software, when you have 40, 45, even 50 percent of the time being wasted against um, homebrews, against uh, rage quitters, start to think about whether there are more productive ways of uh, spending your time. And so that's why I you know, started looking at Magic the Gathering Online more seriously. Um, it sort of answers uh, the Catch-22 that I was mentioning earlier, where um, without a financial commitment, you can't really get a consistent level of commitment to the gameplay experience from both sides. Um, free is a great ideal, and as I've said a couple times already, it works out about half of the time. You get a great experience, you get great opponents about half the time. But I am no longer willing to waste half of my, my time, my valuable free time, um, against suboptimal opponents for whatever reason, whether they're bringing homebrews or whether they're um, bringing bad attitudes. So I've gone ahead, I spent a little over $200 um, <clears throat> buying these digital versions of my Merfolk deck. I just directly ported it from Cockatrice, and I've, I've played in maybe 10 uh, league events at this point, um, and the deck seems to work well in uh, the online metagame, uh, the MTGO metagame, I should say, uh, as it does against the Cockatrice metagame and the Paper metagame. Um, I still have this flex spot, Echoing Truth, that's been doing uh, good work, feels solid. Um, just want to talk a couple uh, minutes, maybe, about uh, these things up here and, and how they work in this program for those of you uh, only familiar with Cockatrice. Um, essentially, when you buy... Magic the Gathering Online, you spend $10 and you get five event tickets, which are basically magic bucks. Uh, you use the magic bucks to join events, hence the name event tickets. But uh, there is sort of a magic online economy, and event tickets are essentially the dollar in, uh, in the magic online currency, uh, in the magic online economy. If you want to buy certain cards uh, to build a deck, you can go to this trade tab, and you can trade event tickets as if they were dollars uh, with different vendors online to buy those cards. And of course you can also use them to join events. Uh, when you join an event, if you win a certain number of matches, you win a certain number of play points, which can only be used to play, hence the name play points. Uh, these are non-tradable, they can only be used to enter uh, events. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, when you win a certain number of matches, you get a certain number of play points, and if you can consistently win a certain number of matches, uh, you pretty much never have to use event tickets to join the matches. You can just keep netting play points, um, keep refreshing play points with your match wins. And so uh, this, is, this is how the process of quote-unquote sort of going infinite on Magic Online works. Um, if you can manage, in general, sort of like a, a three match win out of five, sort of a 60% win rate, uh, you can go infinite, which is to say, um, in these friendly leagues, which I've started playing uh, in order to sort of get more used to the interface uh, before I move fully into the modern competitive leagues, um, where the, the payout structure is much stiffer than in the friendly leagues, um, I've been winning these things called treasure chests, and just recently they become tradable, and they're trading at approximately a booster pack uh, of value. So... Online, that's like 3.8 ticks that they're event. When I say ticks, it's a, I'm talking about event tickets. Um, you can trade a treasure chest, uh, which you get as a prize, um, for about three or four event tickets. And so, if you win four matches in a in a friendly league, you get four treasure chests. If you win all five matches, you get eight treasure chests. So, eight treasure chests translates to something like uh, 30 dollars. It's basically um, three or four times eight. Comes out to about 30 event tickets, which you can sell directly to vendors for cash, actually. I know MTGO traders, uh, they buy event tickets for 95 cents cash each. So, you know, I've been accruing tre treasure chests, um, converting them into event tickets so that I can, um, if I do poorly in one event, I can just um, enter with event tickets, 
win more play points, and then just start uh, cruising on play points again, winning treasure chests, trading them for event tickets, and so forth. So I've begun this process of going infinite, and overall, the, the um, experience on Magic the Gathering Online is becoming very satisfying for me. Uh, if you're a player like me who um, takes the deck, takes the experience very seriously, um, I've sort of come to uh, the realization that what people uh, say about MTGO being the best place uh, to play the game uh, is pretty much is pretty much true. Uh, I find it very satisfying, um, and while it can be frustrating because you're paying basically real money uh, to play like you would at your local game store, um, and sometimes you lose, uh, and of course then you're losing real money. If you're really serious, you know you can get that positive win, uh, that win percentage, and you know start start winning some nice prizes. Eventually, you know th this 36 event tickets, basically 36 or 35 dollars. Um, I made that in a week or two. So if I just keep playing like I would be doing on Cockatrice, I'm I'm really getting tangible results, uh, tangible benefits to my gameplay time. Um, I can cash out on this anytime uh, if I if I just want the money for some reason. Or I can use it to construct other decks online and uh, branch out a little bit. So that's it. That's just to explain to you guys uh, this transition that I've been making. Um, I feel really positive about it. I, it was a little bit weird at first because there's a super steep learning curve to all of the hotkeys and everything in Magic Online. But it's nothing that you know we can't handle. Um, if you can handle all the intricacies of playing a modern deck, you can handle the intricacies of passing priority in MTGO. Uh, it's just a little annoying at first. Um, so that's it. Please let me know your guys' thoughts on, um, on Magic the Gathering Online, um, what your learning experience was, um, how your gameplay experience is, uh, what you think about Cockatrice and X-Mage compared to MTGO, um, and, you know, have you been considering making the switch yourself? Um, if so, I have to say at this point that I encourage it. And... Um, yeah, I think that's it for now, guys. Uh, please share your comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will start posting more match videos again soon. Uh, I've, as I've mentioned, I'm just still adjusting to uh, the new platform. So uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.